Reddit asked me to ask you to tell me the story of Chess Bay, the Reddit moderator who pitted you against Eric Hansen, uh, also known as Chess Bro. I I'm just saying things. I don't know. I don't know much about Eric Hansen. I guess Eric is another grandmaster. Right. You guys had <laughs> some uh, drama and tension between each other. Uh, so we'll also ask you to tell me what you like best about Eric Hansen as a human being. Here's what I would say. The the whole stream streamers and the whole boom of chess, there are certain people, certain entities that are very, very important to what happened. Um, you know, there are a lot of people in the right place at the right time. Myself, Botez, the chess bras, uh, Levy as well. We were all kind of in the right place at the right time. But just having the personalities alone is not enough. You need people who push things. And um, there are a lot of things that have been said about Chess Bay, about what she did. At the end of the day, the way that I view it is pretty straightforward. You don't have to agree with what she did, the manner in which she did things, but it pushed the game, it pushed the directory and Chess on Twitch forward in a way that would not have been possible with anybody else at the time. Chess.com, for example, they were not directly um, pushing it. So you needed someone who was pushing it. Mm -hmm. And that, so to me, when I look at the whole boom actually of what happened on Twitch, in many ways, I think she is just as responsible as I was, Levy was, Botez was, and the bras were. All of us were extremely fortunate because if you didn't have someone pushing it forward and chess.com was not really that involved at the time, it never would have gotten to where it was. So you can sort of look at it and say, okay, you don't agree with what happened, but you needed someone like that who was going to push, push really hard to get chess to where it is today. Can you comment on what happened for people who have no clue what you were talking about? Or is that not useful? I, I don't think it's specifically useful to get into it. I think there are a lot of layers. Um, people felt there were things like abuses of power, things of that nature. There were a lot of things that were said. Um, you know, I don't want to be super negative about, about what happened specifically. But one thing people will note um, is that prior to what did happen in April of 20, I think that was 2021 now, uh, there were a lot more collaborations. The chess world was much more together as a whole. A lot of streamers did things together. After what happened in April, there was a big sort of separation. A lot of streamers went off in their own directions because of what happened. Um, so that is, I mean, that's not the whole story. There's a lot more to it, of course, but I think it's fair to say that. I, I, if I can just comment on the, the few times I've tuned into the streaming world, I do hate to see the the silos that were created. One of the reasons I've been a fan and now a good friend of uh, Joe Rogan, you call it collaborations, but it's basically everybody is supporting each other, gets excited for each other, promotes each other, and there's not that competitive feeling. With with streamers, sometimes I've just noticed that there's a natural siloing effect. I don't know why that is exactly. Uh, maybe because drama is somehow good for views and clicks and that kind of stuff. I don't know what that is, but I hate to see it because I, I love seeing kind of friendship and uh, uh, collaboration, you know, like this, that kind of I stuff. I think this also goes like, again, try not to be super negative, but this also goes to the chess world as a whole. Like one of the things that I've been in this chess world for a very long time, not talking about online, but just like the chess world itself. And I've been very fortunate because I've seen a couple booms and busts. So like in the late, I th actually it wasn't late 90s, it was in the mid 90s. There was a period of time when Intel and IBM and all these tech companies were very big on chess. There, there, were, there was this PCA Grand Prix World Championship held in New York. Um, there, there also were, I think there was like the Deep Blue stuff later on in the late 90s with Gary, Gary Kasparov. Um, and you had a lot of interest at the time. And then it sort of went went up in flames for a couple different reasons. Also in the late late 2000s or maybe mid-2000s, mid there was a, a group in Seattle that was very big on chess. They hosted the US Championship, all these different things. There have been a lot of booms, uh, booms and busts. Of course, if you go way back, there was the Fisher boom as well. Um, but inevitably, what leads to these busts? And the, the thing that leads to it is at the end of the day, people in the chess world have this natural tendency to want to not work together. You want to hang on to whatever, whatever piece of the chess world you have, as opposed to thinking about it from the standpoint of what's good for one is good for all. And so it's one of those things that now that I'm in this situation, having seen these booms to bust, I, I, I remember when I was younger, I would very oftentimes think like, why is it the chess isn't bigger? Why do we struggle so much to, to grow the game? And I think, you know, we, we see the reasons. So now when I'm in this, this position, it's also very tough because like, I know what's happened. You try to learn from the past, um, but you still, it still feels very hard to uh, break out from that. It feels very tough. And 
It's also difficult because another thing that people kind of misunderstand is from time to time, I'll talk about myself. I'll actually talk about levy and incomes or how well we're doing. And the main reason I talk about this is that I wanted to inspire like FIDE, the governing bodies and others feel like, wow, these people are having such success. Like we, we surely we can do something different. We can change things. And somehow it has not happened, um, which is in a way very, very disheartening to me because I want to see more interest in chess. You know, you want to see more sponsors, more more of the general public getting excited by the game. So it is one of those things that's very, very difficult. Yeah, so you want to see innovation Mm -hmm. on the parts of everybody, but also the organizations like FIDE and chess.com to uh, how to inspire a large number of people, which is what... This is what streamers are doing. They're constantly innovating, I guess, of mm-hmm. how, how to reach a very large uh, audience. Uh, before we forget, just to put a little love out Oh, you out want there. me to ask about Eric? It was yeah, Eric. yeah, yeah, yeah. A little love out there. What do you like best about Eric Hansen as a human being? Um, I think he's, it's mainly, he's just, He's he's very he's very charismatic. He's very charismatic. He he knows the the brand that he has, and he's he doesn't like he doesn't pretend to fake it. Like he knows what his brand is, and and he owns it. So he's a uh, just for people who don't know, and I don't know. He's a grandmaster. He's a very grandmaster. Strong, yeah, he's a strong, he's a strong grandmaster, but he's also like a a creator. He, yeah, one he, one of the one of the earliest major chess content creators on Twitch. Like educational stuff too. Uh, a mix, mix, mix of educational, mix okay, of high level, entertainment, mix of everything. Okay. Yeah. 